Greetings and welcome. Where can you enjoy a stunning view across the North Wales coast? What is a stink pipe? And did the Romans holiday at the seaside? In this video, we will discover some of the best kept secrets of Prestatin. <laughs> Barkby Beach is the most eastern beach of Prestatyn and is the starting or ending point of the promenade. Beyond the end of the promenade is the extensive sand dune system known as Gronant Dunes. They are some of the most extensive natural sand dunes remaining on the North Wales coast. They stretch eastwards to Talacra and the Point of Air. The Gronant Dunes are home to a broad selection of animal and plant life, many of which are rare. In recent years, natterjack toads and sand lizards have been reintroduced to the dunes, which were once their natural habitat. The dunes are designated as a site of special scientific interest. We could perhaps describe Prestatin Castle as a lost castle, all that remains today is a circular raised grassy area topped with a further raised circular grassy area in a field. However, it's perfectly obvious that this is some sort of man-made structure. Indeed, it is marked on maps as a mott and bailey. Little is known about the story of Prestatin Castle. The most reliable information I can find is as follows. A parcel of land at what we now know as Prestatin was given by King Henry II to Robert Bannister in 1157. It's uncertain whether a castle was already existent, but it is certain that Henry had instructed Robert Bannister to improve the site and its surroundings. The castle would most likely have been a wooden structure, although it would have been substantial. Excavations in the early 1900s revealed a stone wall more than one metre thick surrounding the bailey. The castle was destroyed after only a few years by the Welsh in 1167, led by Owen Gwyneth. The stone at the centre is believed to be a modern addition and is what is known as a rubbing stone. It simply provides something for livestock to rub against without damaging fences or hedgerows. At first glance, the Nova looks like a typical modern leisure centre. However, its history dates as far back as 1923, when a Lido was created. The outdoor swimming pool was originally fed with seawater. It wasn't until 1985 that it was converted to an indoor swimming pool when this building was first constructed. When the Lido was built in 1923, it was accompanied by a ballroom as part of the complex. By the 1960s, it had become something of an important music venue. Bands which had played here included Status Quo, The Rolling Stones and even, of course, The Beatles. At the side of the Nova, we now have some modern public sculpture works which make it a pleasant enough place to spend some time on a sunny summer's day. The Promenade is an important cycling and walking route. It forms part of the National Cycle Network. It's also part of the long-distance Wales Coast Path, which follows the entire coastline of Wales. As if that is not enough, it's also the starting point of Offa's Dyke Path. Another long-distance footpath, which follows approximately the Wales-England border all the way to Chepstow. Offa's Dyke was reputedly built by King Offa some 1300 years ago in the late 700s. It's regarded as the first attempt to define a border between England and Wales. The path again follows Offa's Dyke only approximately. 
Many local residents and tourists will recognise where I am now, but have you noticed this tall column behind the road sign? It doesn't seem to serve much purpose. It's metal, so neither a telecom nor power pole. It's too tall to be a disused street light. At the top of Prestatin High Street, we find another one. Well, I did a bit of research and can tell you that these structures are called stink pipes or stench pipes. Here, further up the hillside, is another one. They are a relic of Victorian engineering. Their purpose is to ventilate sewers. Their height dissipates the smelly gases of sewers high above people. Without some system of ventilation, sewers can accumulate explosive gases, the outcome of which could be a bit messy. Apparently, Frank Bird was one of the more prolific manufacturers of stink pipes. Don't judge, but I have found that stink pipes do have quite following on the internet. The railway first came to Prestatin in 1848 and was instrumental in the rapid growth of the town. By 1900, the station had expanded to four platforms and a new layout with new station buildings, only to be reduced back in the 1980s to the two platforms we see today. We can still easily see one of the disused platforms. Also, one of the original station buildings remains and is a Grade 2 listed building. A little over ten years ago, this modern footbridge was installed along with a lift to the platform. The walkway might at first seem unnecessarily long, but it's made that way on purpose to be an accessible station. At the beginning of this video, I wondered whether the Romans came to Prestatin for their seaside holidays, and so far We've established that until less than 200 years ago, Prestatin was never more than a scattered hamlet. The seaside hotels, guest houses, caravans and holiday camps are certainly a modern feature of the town. A bit like this estate of modern retirement bungalows. In fact, there's probably nothing here much older than the 1930s. So I can hear you all shouting at your screens right now, John, what on earth have you brought us here for? Well, bear with me. You see, whilst we know that the Romans were very active at Chester and Caernarvon, and doubtless had built a road between the two, there is scant evidence of Roman activity at Prestatin. Well, that is, except for this. So what do we have here? I'll be honest, nobody entirely knows what it is. It, it is the remains of a bathhouse which dates from the Roman era. However, nobody has quite made up the minds whether it was built by the Romans, for the Romans, or just built in Roman times. There's certainly very little other evidence of Roman presence that's been found local to this bathhouse. It's lain under grassy meadows until it was discovered as recently as the 1930s. So, maybe the Romans did come to Prestatin for the holidays after all. In the early 1900s, cinemas were an essential place of entertainment, Prestatin's Scala Cinema first opened in 1913. The advent of television and then video cassettes took its toll on cinemas everywhere. However, the Scala managed to stumble along right until the year 2000, when a fancy modern multi-screen cinema opened just down the road in Rill. However, Prestatin does have a strong community and local residents came together to bring about the rebuilding and reopening of the Scala in 2009. The cinema is still popular today. It's got two screens and was the first cinema in Wales to become fully digital.
It does, of course, screen recent blockbusters, but also screens recorded and live theatre shows. This curious fountain, tucked away in a flower bed, commemorates the British industrial chemist Henry Davis Pochan. As well as being both a chemist and industrialist, he was a prolific landowner. In the 1870s, he had a residence in the shadow of the Great Orm, Llandidno, and in 1874 he bought the Bodman Estate in the Conway Valley. Although information is scant, it appears that he invested heavily in Prestatin and was quite instrumental in creating much of the town that we see today. In the early 1800s, Prestatin was little more than a hamlet or village. However, when the railway arrived in the 1840s, Prestatin began to grow rapidly. By 1860, Prestatin had grown to such size that it warranted a separate parish for the town. Thus, Prestatin's parish church, Christ Church, was consecrated in May 1863 when the entire population of Prestatin was around 500. Compare that with today's population figure of around 19,000. The cemetery has the grave of Arthur Roland Jones, who was the first officer on the ocean liner Lusitania when it sank in 1915. He survived the sinking, but succumbed whilst aboard the steamship Avante, which was sunk in 1918. Other crew members of Lusitania were from Wales, as well as several passengers. I've covered the story of two sisters in my other video about Bagilcht. In the 1920s and 30s, holidaymakers would often take interest and enjoy the simpler things in life. Gardens and parks with ornamental flower beds scattered along winding pathways held a popularity which is often sadly lost today. The hillside gardens are a prime example of this. However, it's still worth visiting, if only for the breathtaking views of the North Wales coast. Originally, the terraced gardens were planted with trees, rose beds, flower beds and rock gardens. These landscaping works were carried out by local unemployed men who received food parcels in return for their labour. The shelter was constructed at the expense of local benefactor Mr King, who presented it to the town of Prestatin in 1929. The shelter is a Grade II listed building thanks to its unusual and innovative early use of concrete. From the upper terrace of the shelter, you'll probably notice an unusual feature on a private house nearby. The copper dome is a revolving observatory. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed researching and making it. I'm neither a professional historian nor videographer, I just enjoy learning about the world around me and sharing that. I hope to see you soon in another video, and meanwhile, have a grand tour!